All right, just to let you guys know, this bowl contains spoilers, so if you have not seen the movie yet, you probably should stop listening. In many ways, J.J. Abrams' The Force Awakens is a return to form for Star Wars. It brings back familiar characters fans have been waiting for over 30 years to be reunited with, while introducing several fresh faces that make this new trilogy, now under the Disney umbrella, show promise. As much of a fan as I am, I was a little skeptical upon hearing the announcement of Disney's acquisition of Lucasfilm back in 2012. Like everyone else, I anxiously wanted to see how the mega-conglomerate House of Mouse would continue to helm the franchise. To everyone's delight, the announcement of returning cast members Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill, and Carrie Fisher promised fans that they would finally get to see their favorite characters return to the big screen. But in what capacity? I'm the underdog. I actually like the prequels. I'm actually a fan of anything George Lucas does. The man is one of the main reasons I decided to pursue a career in media. Of course, I have my own reasons for liking the later trilogy, and I've given up trying to defend it. Like them or not, I don't think they were the films everyone was expecting. In fact, one of the reasons I appreciate the prequels is that Lucas wasn't trying to please the fans, as strange as that sounds. He simply wanted to make an entertaining series of movies. That's the biggest difference between Lucas's prequels and Abrams' latest installment. This one does everything in its power to cater to the fans, as if apologizing to them. Not that fans necessarily need an apology. If they didn't like the prequels, just don't acknowledge them. You could easily go straight from Return of the Jedi to Episode 7 without seeing the first three episodes, and you'd be fine. That's not to say that Force Awakens completely obliterates the prequels canon, it just simply avoids referencing it too often. That being said, this is the sequel that fans wanted. It feels like a natural continuation of Jedi, taking place 30 years after the fall of the Empire. And in that time, it doesn't seem that much has changed. Luke Skywalker has undergone a major gender change, Darth Vader has regressed into a tantrum-throwing teenager, Stormtroopers look more badass, and Han Solo has gotten older. Needless to say, perhaps the film's biggest flaw is that it borrows too heavily from the original trilogy, especially from A New Hope. And you can call it whatever you want, Star Wars or Episode 4, it is what it is. I'm not going to go much deeper into that, as just about every other critic has beaten that to death. Honestly, I feel there's just enough new things to make it a fresh experience. It just draws heavily from the original trilogy as its backbone. Seeing this with an audience on opening night was an experience unto itself. I've seen it three times as of this writing, and with each time the audience reaction seemed to diminish. I'm not saying that the film is not as good after repeated viewings, just that nothing seems to match what I experienced on opening night. As soon as the Lucasfilm logo appeared on screen, everyone applauded and cheered. The same thing happened during the opening crawl, and whenever a classic character was introduced. It seems like Disney was intentionally delivering fan service, but I didn't hear fans complain, and admittedly I was one of the fans cheering. I'm not going to deny that seeing Han and Chewbacca back together again was a heartfelt and earned experience. They don't show up until about the 40 minute mark. The scene that actually had me on the verge of tears was seeing Han being reunited with General Leia. I really wanted to see more of them on screen, as well as an explanation for what exactly happened to them over the last three decades. But the film does such a good job with what it does give us that ultimately I feel we don't need much backstory. We know that at some point Han and Leia had a kid who would later join the dark side. Apparently, in the books that were released just before the release of the film, Han and Leia got married, and their marriage ended as a result of what happened to their son Ben who's been refitted with the name Kylo Ren. However, I like how the film keeps this open-ended. As a matter of fact, the film seems to skimp on any explanation. How did the Empire transition into the New Order? Where did the Knights of Ren play into all this? Just how powerful is the Resistance? It pretty much expects the audience to draw their own conclusions. A lot of fans have nitpicked these plot holes, but since when has Star Wars needed to spell everything out for us? It seems to me that the last time Star Wars attempted to deal with a backstory, fans were riding in the streets, arguing about who shot first and screaming that George Lucas raped their childhoods. So maybe it's to the film's credit that it doesn't reveal everything. It also needs to be said that as fun of a film as this is, it's a setup film, as were episode 1 and 4. We're not supposed to get all the answers now. My hope is that by the time we get to episode 9, it just doesn't leave us with too many loose ends like with the Matrix trilogy. This is why I'm not going to comment on General Hux, Captain Phasma, or Supreme Leader Snoke. They will probably have stronger presences in the next couple of films. I liked how this one seemed to focus on Kylo Ren. Everyone seemed to complain that the prequels didn't have any clear villains, and I think it's made very clear from Kylo Ren's first appearance that he is the central villain. As far as Adam Driver goes, I liked his performance. 
I like how you can actually understand what he's saying beneath the mask, even though Poe Dameron cracks a joke about it. I even like how Kylo takes off his mask when confronting the captive Rey and later Han Solo. Some fans think Ren would have made for a more menacing villain if he had scars and physical flaws, but doesn't this film already borrow too much from the original trilogy? Star Wars fans are a fickle bunch. Going back to the prequels, a lot of people felt that Anakin Skywalker should have started out as a mean-spirited kid pulling the wings off of flies. Why even bother to tell that story? That's what made Anakin an interesting character, despite what you say about the actors portraying him, was that he started out as an innocent kid. I like how Kylo Ren hasn't gone completely dark. We see him struggling with the urge to go back to the light. He hasn't completely given himself over to the dark side yet, which is why he has his little humorous temper tantrums. As far as his costume goes, I've heard people criticize his use of the mask, that it isn't necessary for him to utilize it. Obviously, these guys have no concept of how marketing works. No one's going to buy an Adam Driver action figure. It's Disney, and they have to sell toys. All joking aside, I feel Ren's mask makes him all the more menacing. It is a throwback to Darth Vader, but you also have to remember he's a member of the Knights of Ren, so it's probably also a ceremonial thing. Ultimately, I thought Kylo Ren was a very formidable villain and one of the more interesting Star Wars bad guys in a long time. As far as the new characters, what can I say that hasn't already been said? Aside from the obvious parallels between Luke and Rey, I enjoyed Daisy Ridley's performance. I liked her hairstyle, I liked watching her play around in her world, I even liked the little nuances like watching her wear an oversized X-Wing fighter helmet. Her introduction is so strong, especially given that there's very little dialogue at first. I was admittedly a little underwhelmed by John Williams' score during my first viewing, but I've grown to really like the subtlety of Ray's theme. I also really like John Boyega as Finn, even the few times that he broke out of character, the taunting of Captain Phasma comes to mind. You could tell that he was having a blast filming his scenes, and we've never seen a character quite like him in a Star Wars film before. The only character in the film I wanted to see a little more of was Poe Dameron. Everyone compares him to Han Solo, but I didn't really see that in him. You have to remember, Han Solo's roots are as a smuggler. He's a tough guy, but he's also a smartass. Poe Dameron comes off as more of a natural leader. He isn't cocky, which is what Han is all about, but he's got a different kind of charisma that makes you want to see more of his character. I love his interactions with Finn, and that was something I wanted to see more of. The ace fighter pilot with a heart of gold. Seeing him shoot down nearly a dozen TIE fighters doesn't hurt either. Of course, my favorite part of the whole film was Chewie and Han. For a guy who seemed to swear off Han Solo like the plague, it's been a long time since I've seen Harrison Ford have so much fun playing a role. He's taken the character of Han Solo in the direction you'd expect him to go in. No longer the respectable general we saw in Jedi, the events that unfolded in the last 30 years caused him to regress back to his smuggling days, as he's once again drowning in debt and pursued by angry bounty hunters. There's a heavy action scene involving these massive tentacled creatures called Rathtars. The scene is a bit of a distraction from the main story, but it also allows Han to be Han. Chewie was the funniest part of the film, and I don't mean that in a bad way. He's funny at all the right moments, and he also sounds more authentic here than he ever did before. There's a scene where Chewie gets injured and lets out this loud scream that you'd never expect to hear from him. Now it's time to reveal a major spoiler, so if you haven't seen the film yet, please stop listening. When I heard that Harrison Ford was returning to the series, I speculated that he was going to die. The question was how. Originally, since Return of the Jedi, Ford thought that the character should sacrifice himself for the good of the Rebellion. Of course, Lucas wanted his trilogy to end on a good note, and much to Ford's chagrin, the character survived. Since then, Ford was probably the only actor from that original trilogy that skyrocketed to stardom. I couldn't see him returning to do three more films, and I figured a stipulation for Ford to come back was that Han had to die. The only reason I'm bothered by his death is that it makes Leia's attempt at rescuing him from Jabba's palace all for naught. He survived blowing up two Death Stars and being frozen in carbonite, also his son could kill him. I like the added touch of Han reaching up to touch his son's face before he falls into that pit. I just wish there was a little more weight to that scene. It was still a very gripping moment because up until Ren gave the fatal blow, I was clenching my fists, hoping that somehow Han would make it out alive. As for the ending of the film, it's pretty obvious that they're saving Luke until the very end. After all, that's the basic plot of the film. Everyone's looking for the last of the Jedi. I love the shots of Rey hiking up the mountain mixed with William's haunting score as Luke turns around to reveal an aging Jedi master reminiscent of Alec Guinness. The best part of that final shot is the look Luke gives to Rey as she hands him his lightsaber. There's so much that's said in his eyes and his facial expression, and yet nothing is said at all. It's a very gripping closure to a movie that is anything but sequel-proof. 
Is it a masterpiece? No. In fact, it doesn't try to be anything else than a Star Wars film, and Star Wars has always been about fun. Whether you go to see these movies for the characters, the environments, the weapons, the costumes, the action, the effects, the music, or the stories, Force Awakens delivers on all of these factors. The Force is strong with this one.